Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome to Under the Hill! We have left South America. We are no longer living in South America, we are now on holiday. We're officially on holiday in Slovenia for Under the Hill, and we're going to be here for three weeks. We have a working holiday. Now, the farmer, he lives over here, um, in one of these. I forgot to ask Sinikadu, which is his actual house. Which one he lives in. I think, actually, it's this one over here. It's this big one over there. Um, that would be his actual house. But we are staying in a holiday bungalow. So we're actually staying in this little house here. Um, it's, it's not very big. But it's very nicely done up. We've got this little holiday bungalow here. It's right next to the yard. And we're sort of conveniently placed so that we can come out and we can do some work here. Now, you may notice that there is a um, bank balance currently of 1 million euros. Uh, that is because our sponsors have uh, sort of got back some of the money that we've invested into Estancia Lapacho, and that they've basically just given us a pile of money. And they've said, look, thanks for everything you've done in South America. It's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, we're really pleased with everything you've done. Here's some money. Go on holiday. Have a bit of fun. Um, but just remember, you're still representing us, so don't do anything stupid. Um... I can't promise that I'm not going to do anything stupid because uh, those of you who've been watching this uh, channel for more than a single episode have probably realised by now that, um, that something stupid is almost inevitable at some point. Uh, but yeah, so we, we've, we've, we're on holiday. I, I, what do we do? So, well, I was just thinking, well, the first thing that we really want to do is we want to take a look around the map. This is the map. It's a very small map, and it's done deliberately very small. Everything is quite tiny on it. The fields are very small. Um, everything is very small. So the first thing that I would like to do is I just want to take a little look around the yard. There's a small village here that you sort of spawn in. Um, obviously, we got our holiday bungalow right there. And then the farmer's house is this one down here. It's quite a big house, actually. He he, he does live very well, does Sinikadu. He's, 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 he lives very comfortably here, I think. I mean, look at, look at this house. Look at the size of this place. It's huge. So he, he's doing quite well for himself, all things considered. It's a very small farm that he's got here. And so we've got, over here, we've got some grain storage. We're just going to take a look in around here, see if there's anything else. We've got a grain tip point right there, and there's a storage shed, and so on and so forth. And then you've got the grain where you can tip it out there. But there's no long trains of grain trailers coming in and out of here. Oh, no. You've got to do backing and turning and all sorts. And that is one of the things that I really like about this map is that you've got to use small machines. You cannot get big machines around this map. They just don't fit, right? They literally will not fit. I mean, look at the squeeze that everything has got here. It's all squeezed in tight, and it is squeezed in tight. It's squeezed in very tight. We come over to here. This is wool pallets. They will turn up over here, I think. Do they turn up on this bit? I think they might turn up on that bit. Um, and you've got uh, stuff down here. I think this is even the... Uh, broken. Train transporting. It says broken up there. This is a silage clamp right here. I'm walking through a silage clamp. Silos for storage, yeah. But see see what I mean by small scale? This is a tiny little silage clamp. I don't know what the actual um, capacity of it is. If I press F1, does it tell me? No, it just says fill level chaff. It doesn't actually tell me what the full capacity is. Uh, something is broken on there with the glance mod, and I'm not quite sure. I know that there are one or two little bugs with this map. Um, they are being worked on, as far as I know, and there's not really a lot that we can do about that, so we're not going to worry about it. We've got a whole load. There's, there's missions available. You're not going to be making a vast sum of money doing missions. Now, that's kind of one of the reasons that you start off with everything that you could possibly need. We've got a muck spreader there. We've got a hay turner. We've got a rake. We've got a baler. We've got an animal feed wagon there. You don't start with any animals. Um, you look through here a minute. None at all. No animals. But, and then uh, we've got prices here. You've got one sell point for grains. Uh, so it's, it's keeping it nice and simple. You've got a trailer. You've got a Valtra tractor there. You've got a seed drill on the back. And you've got a plow there with the cultivator that we're wandering around on top of. Fertilizer spinner. Mower there. We've got another tractor there. So you've got everything you need to be able to do your farming. And there is a combine around here somewhere. Well, I don't know where the combine is located exactly, but in here, this is where the cows are kept. And if we go into here, agro, agri frigor hay dryer, storage progress, grass 0%, drying progress, hay 0. Okay. 
I don't know what that is. It's um Oh this, um, the, these are more common in Europe than they are anywhere else. I've, I've not really seen any of these in the UK. But basically, there's a big old fan on the end here. And you put the grass up into the barn up above. And then the fan runs continuously. And then eventually the, um, the grass is sort of turned into hay. But it's done so whilst in storage. It's not done. And we, we can go up here. Can we open the door? We cannot open the door, but we can go up the ladder. Um, and while the, the grass is in storage, it gets turned into hay up there, and then you've got hay that is ready to use. Sometimes it's not done like that, sometimes it's mostly dried out in the fields, and then it's stored up there, but this one looks like it's set up so that you can just come along. I don't know if it's, is it here? What are we, oh, this is where the, um, you buy the cows to bring in, and then the cows just go into this bit. I don't know if there is an animation for cows to be in any of the fields anywhere. There might be, there might not be, at the moment I'm not quite sure. This one right here looks like you put the grass in here somewhere. Um, if I do this, uh, it's not there. But if I go into here, right, to automatic filling, R. Uh, it looks like you just bring grass and you tip it in here. And that's how it works. So drying, progress, info, grass, empty. So I'm not really sure how that one works. It's, it's going to be interesting to find out when out. We've got slurry on the back here, and then there'll be manure over there. So what is this one on this side? That is... Oh, hang on. That's the one I already looked at, isn't it? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. And, well, the sheep was in the other one. Right, I'm now going to flick through some machines. So we've got the Valtra over here. This one is the Lieber, and this is at the sawmill. Now, over here, if you have a look, we've got... Uh, Brenstoff and holes, and then wood chips and... I don't know what Brenstoff is. Holes, I think, is wood chips. You know, I'm not actually sure. Genuinely not sure about that, but you put stuff in and you get stuff out, is what, it's amount, what it basically amounts to. Um, you've got... I think you put... Where do you put it? Maybe you put it over here somewhere. Um, wood chips is empty at the moment. We've got that bit there. You've got the sawmill... So there's, there is an infeed somewhere for a sawmill. Sell point for wood. You can sell logs here. I think you bring the logs and you put them near this bit. And I'm pretty sure there are wood chips that go in. I think you put wood chips in that one there in order to do the rest of it. Although I'm not 100% certain. We can take. We might take a look at this. I'm not really sure. Uh, we do have a sell point here for wood chips. So you can bring some wood chips over to this point. And there is a... I think it's ashes. I think there's a pile of ash or... And then compost or something like that. I'm not quite sure how this is working out. But yeah, so you've got some nice little details over here with this um, sawmill. There's some good stuff here all lined up. You've got some little trees over there. And the forestry area... This is actually quite difficult to get round. You do have your work cut out for you. You've got some strips here that are ploughed ready for planting new trees. If you think that it's going to be an easy job getting the trees out of this area, you've got another thing coming. It's definitely not. And this field here, we could mow this one. That could actually be quite good fun. So we, we've had a look at that one, and that is the leaper there. And then we've got the Massey over here, which is by that one. Then we've got this one. This is the Combine. I can squeeze out next to it. Where are we in relation to the rest of it? Uh, the sheep. Where are we? Right, well, we've got a Joskin water trailer there. A little old wheelbarrow in there as well. Oops, come back under there. And so the combine is, is basically is ready to roll. This is ready to go. We've got a barn up here. Can I get in here? I cannot go into the barn. That's all right, but I can go along here. I, I can squeeze up onto this bit. I thought there may have been like a secret or something in there, but no, there is no secrets. Okay, uh, that there is... What is this bit? Oh, this is the pig's. So that's the pig pen in there. That's where you keep the pigs. So where do we go to feed the pigs? We've got chickens down there as well. Uh, you can't climb... You, you can't go up that ladder. But the, if the chickens are over here, it would stand a reason that the eggs will be around here somewhere. I'm guessing that is a manure down there for the pigs. And where's the slurry going to be for the pigs? I'm not quite sure. So I don't know where the feeding points are for the pigs either. There's, there's going to be some feeding points here somewhere. I'm just not quite sure where they are. Uh, I don't think they're this far away. Oh, I see. Right, it's just across the road. So there is the main farm there. 
and there's the grain bit over there in our house just up there and then you come across the road over to here and you've got the water tanker up there you've got another shed here where you can store some machinery and the combine is stored up there and then the pigs is down on this bit here so somewhere along here that would be the slurry right there for the slurry fill level yep that's the slurry there for the pigs somewhere around here is going to be the uh, feed but I tell you what if I walk the edge like this we might be able to find where the pig feeding points are I suspect that they are actually built into the shed here and you, you go along here somewhere there we go oh, oh, open door uh, oh hang on a minute Oh, you've got to press and hold to open the door. Press and hold it, and it opens all the way. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I really like that. Uh, we've got, well, this is a cow buyer in here. Okay, so there's cows in there. We can close the door. Just press and hold the right click to close that one. That is really cool. I like that. That is that is really, really good. Um, and then we can go in here into chickens. And I'm assuming that we could gather the eggs from in there as well. Maybe, the, I don't know if the eggs would just be in there or if they'll be outside as well. Uh, we'll open up this door here and Well, it looks is that a feeding trough? I don't know. It's it it does It looks like that we've got the feeding and the water is here. So water can come up to that point and then Feeding in there somehow, but I, I'm not sure how it would work. Uh, I need to go over to there to close the door Okay so that's actually really cool. I really like that. That's a lovely little detail for the pigs. And it's, it, again, it's very small scale. Everything is small scale. You've got to work small scale here. If you don't, you, you're going to be in trouble. There's no way you're going to be doing massive, great big machines on this map. It's just not going to work. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go up to the shop a minute. We're going to go up here. Gold Crest Pacific, uh, Pacific, Sp Gold Crest Pacific Grain is right there. And then we've got the shop. Now, I am aware of one little bug here with the shop. If you go here to the shop, like this, we press R, and then you come out of the shop, it puts you in the feeder here, and you're stuck. Okay? That is one little bug with this one that I am aware of. That's the only bug that I have found so far. Some people did say that there are some little issues with the map. Um, I think, as far as I know, they're just very small issues. And it's actually quite simple, just... We can walk in here like this. We can come in here. There's egg sell point there, so we can sell the eggs. You just come right into the shop. If you want to buy stuff in a shop, rather than going up and activating that one with R, just come up here and then press P on your keyboard to open up the shop, and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. So what I wanted to do first was I wanted to buy a car, and I figure that the little pickup rodeo there is actually quite suitable for this map. And I'm going to go today for... I think I'm going to go for a medium blue for that one, and red rims. Why not? Um... Engine setup wheel. I was just oh, wheel stand design two design. I didn't know there was designs. Okay, let's go design three on the wheels and we'll see what that does. We got twenty two thousand eight hundred on our wheels. Let's back out of there a minute like that and let's go ahead and have a look. Machinery is deposited round the back down here. Ooh, I like our new pickup. This one looks very cool. Okay, and selling point for wool right here. And this is a selling point for the machinery here, and that is the sell point for the grain. Now, if I just climb into the truck, I can zoom out a little bit, and I can show you. Um, as you can see, there is a fuel station there, and you can get to the fuel. Fortunately, there isn't a collision on the hedge, right? So we can come over here, and we can get fuel from the, the fuel bowser. But, you look at this, that is the sell point for your grain right if you're bringing a massive great big three arctic trailer um road train in here you ain't gonna fit right you are just not gonna fit small machines or it ain't happening okay you know i've, I've said before it's go big or go home on this one it's go small or go home because quite frankly big isn't gonna work you're just gonna get jammed up somewhere and then that's gonna be the end of it now I am aware that there may be some issues elsewhere on the map. I haven't personally encountered any. I don't have um, crop protection, uh, crop destruction rather. I don't have crop destruction on at all. Uh, we've got, do not drive too deeply into the water. 
Right, well that would be one issue that we've got down here, is it's thinking that this is a pond down here, but it's not actually a pond. Um, we can ignore that. That may have been from a previous version of the map. This map is like four versions in now, I think. Um, so we've got a beautiful meadow right here that we could actually make a little bit of hay on, and I'd quite like to do hay as one of the first jobs that we do. We've got a meadow there, and there's another one directly north of us as well. Hay is one of my favourite jobs in FS17, and so I'm thinking that I'd like to start things off by doing a bit of mowing and a bit of hay. So we could go for a front-mounted mower and the... Um, the rear mounted mower as well we've got a rear mounted mower so we could buy another mower to go with that one and do the two together we might i'm not quite sure yet but i'm thinking that the first thing we'll do is we will head towards home uh this is as much as you've got up here you just come up here and you've got some bigger fields here i think we actually already own that field that is our field our very own owned field and if you look there it doesn't look like anything is on it um and it's nearly ready for... We could turn that into silage right now. The animal dealership is right here at the top. And buying animals was also one of the early jobs that I want to do. I think I'm going to go for making some hay before I worry about buying the animals. So you've got the animal sell buy point up here. Um, we can bring the animals up here to sell after... You know, once we've, like, earned a few. Um, I honestly... If I had a farm this kind of size, I mean, most of this we don't own, so it, it is very small-scale stuff. And if I had, like, a 30-acre farm, um, I would have, uh, you know, probably some sheep and some cows on it. And I almost certainly wouldn't worry about, well, I wouldn't worry about large-scale pigs. Um, not on a big enough scale where you'd be carrying transport loads of pigs around. No, what I would do is I would have one or two pigs as just, you know, house pigs. And then, um, so a, say a single sow, and then she has piglets, and you have the piglets for the freezer. Uh, so it's just for your own personal meat consumption, and not for an actual commercial thing. It's just to, you know, have some cheap meat. Um, I've done that in the past. I grew up on a small holding, and that is what we did. We had a pig that we used to keep for... Um, oh, the, the piglets were for the meat. Um, although she was, she was quite good at producing piglets. She generally produced a lot at once. So we would, um, you know, friends and family would get a pig each, and uh, when it came time to killing the piglets. But um, yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that I would picture doing on this map. That it would fit really well because you've got the right size pen for it as well. Um, just a single solitary sow in here, and pigs do do quite well on their own. Um, you can have one or maybe two pigs in here, but we always found that she did better on her own. Um, if she, we did for a little while have an extra pig there. We kept one of her daughters uh, as a second sow, and they did not get on. She was much happier when she was on her own. And if you if you like put them into a field, they would go to the opposite ends of the field and not talk to each other at all. Um, so she was a much happier pig when she was on her own. So uh, we kept a large black. So this it would be perfect. This is kind of like the pen that we used to keep for her. And she had a house that she would go into as well. Um, it was mud in one corner. And pigs are very clean and tidy animals. You know, they like to wallow in mud. thus to cool their skin. Um, but what they do actually do is when they poop, and as all animals do... Cows, sheep, they tend to just go wherever they are. Donkeys and horses will almost invariably they just have you can find a great big heap of the stuff in one corner. Pigs do the same. Pigs will go out and they will poo in one corner and they won't go elsewhere in their pen. They keep it all in one tidy little corner out the way and then they ignore it. So they're very clean, they're fastidiously clean like that. And yes, rolling around in mud, but they, they like clean mud. And that is for their skin and um, to cool them down in the summer and um, stuff like that. So pigs are actually a very, very clean animal. It's just unfortunate that when they do poo, it absolutely stinks. It's probably the smelliest poo in the animal kingdom. And that is the one unfortunate thing about pigs. They're wonderful, wonderful creatures. Highly intelligent and really funny as well, actually. Uh, but, yeah, the, the unfortunate thing about pigs is that they... Um, well, it's, it's not them. The pigs themselves don't have a bad smell about them. Their poo does, okay? Pig poo is probably the stinkiest thing you'll ever come across. It's worse even than silage effluent, in my opinion. And silage effluent is pretty darned grim. Now, I am not going to be using the, um, uh, what do you call mod anymore. 
Um, what, what, what's the what do you call mod? The, the, you know the who's we call it mod. If I fold that one up, that's the transport position is up like that. Um, the manual attaching mod. I don't like that mod. It doesn't work very well. It's not very realistic for most of the machines that we're hitching on and off. So I am no longer going to be using it. That one is now banned from our series. We are not going to be using it. I've jumped around a little bit, and I know I do jump around a bit. We're going to try to do this realistically. I don't think this tractor would really be man enough to pull a second mower, to put one on the front. So we're just going to go for a single solitary mower. I've got a weight on the front. That weight... Well, actually, I don't know. I was going to say that weight seems a bit big, but it might not, actually. I think that might fit us quite well. Um, the only real question is, do I do a bit of hay just here... No, I'm not. I'm going to go up the road and we're going to make hay, first and foremost, in that bigger meadow that was up the top. Um, although, hang on a minute. Where is... is by the sawmill. There was, there was one by the sawmill, wasn't there? Where did we go and see that, um, like, steeply sloped field? I just want to go and have a look a minute. There was a steeply sloped field and it was out this way, wasn't it? It was through this side. There is the road... And we come up, there it is. This one here. The reason that I want to do this field is because Sinikadu did a video where he actually cut this field. It was this field that he went and cut. And I think he did small bale hay out here. I, I genuinely can't remember what hay he did out here, but he definitely did a video where he was doing hay. Is this modded trees? No, it's not. They've, um, he's taken a model for the apple trees. And he's included it on the map. That's absolutely brilliant. He's got apple trees in here. That's, that's awesome. I love that he's got apple trees out here. This, this is fantastic. The details in this map are just amazing. So what I actually want to do then is uh, I would like to reenact Sinikadu's video where he did the haymaking in this meadow. I'm 99% certain it was this meadow here that he was cutting. So rather than doing the other one that we've got that we were on our way up to do, we want to do this one. But the question is... How do I get to it? I need to be able to get into the field in order to be able to cut it. And that's the difficult thing. I don't remember how we got into the field. Ah, here we go. We've got to come up this road over here. So it's there, um, right in the middle. Okay, let's go back to our tractor a minute. There it is. And we're going to need to turn around. We're facing the wrong way. Ooh, okay, we've um, the traffic has backed up a little bit here. Let's go on around this way. So we're going to reenact one of Sinikadu's videos, one of the fav one of my favorite videos that he made. And he did it in his style where there's no talking on it. He does music and he would sort of speed some little bits up. Some bits would just be normal speed. And it's like it's, it's generally they are really, really well done. And he's, he's got a unique style about him that I've not seen on any other farming simulator channels. And I will be talking about Sinikadu quite a bit in this um, short three-week series because this is his map. This is his map, um, it was made for him by a person who is close to him. I'm not actually stating who it is because um, I'm not sure if he wants me to or not. Um, I do know who it is, but um, yeah, someone who's close to Sinikadu has made this map for Sinikadu to run his series on. And so he's featured this one in, he's definitely had it in FS15, I think it was in FS13 as well. I think he had them in, in all of the series. Now. I remember that bit there being extremely steep, and I don't think that we can get on to that bit, so we're not even going to try. And what we want to do, I think we can come back up here. We need to lower the, we need to unfold this mower. So we start by, ooh, you know, we can't unfold the front. We'll have to unfold the actual mower. Um, and we do once around the outside like this, and then you, you go inside. And there's two reasons that we would do like this. Um, rather than doing the outside round, mowing the outside round first, there is two reasons that you would drive on the outside round and then leave the outside round until the very end before finishing it up. Um, the reason number one is that the grass on the outside round is the thinnest. It's under the hedge, it's in the shade, it's going to be the thinnest and the poorest quality grass. And you're driving over it when you're doing the outside round, so you want to leave it as long as possible before you go back and you mow it going in the opposite direction so that it gives it a chance to sort of recover a little bit and stand back upright. The other reason is you're more likely to get sticks, stones and other things that could break your mower on that outside round than you are anywhere else in the field. So you also want to leave it until you've done the rest of the field just in case the worst happens and you break the mower. 
Um, I have actually done that. I have mowed the rest of healed, and then I've gone round and I have hit a. Um, well, I actually drove into a gatepost. Um, but, but we won't go into that in too much detail. But I did. I drove into the gatepost and damaged the mower. And um, the, fortunately, I'd already finished the field by that point, so it wasn't like I didn't feel it was a major issue. Although the farmer I worked for. She was a teensy bit upset about it. And when I say a teensy bit upset, I mean she was jumping up and down and screaming and yelling. So I'm, I'm guessing she wasn't overly pleased. Um, so, yes, the reason that, that we, we're not going to, like, now turn around and do the outside, the very outside edge. We're going to carry on just mo moving into the field and going to keep cutting like this. So that we don't risk damaging the mower and we give the grass on the outside edge the maximum amount of time to recover from being driven on and then hopefully it will all be okay and we'll be able to have a field full of grass that we can then do something with so we've been going over we'll go over it next with a hay turner and then we will get the rake out here we've only got that small rake and i am wondering if we could try a slightly bigger rake than that one um the hay turner as well is the small standard in game one my favourite rake by far in this game, uh, rake, uh, my favourite hay turner in this game is the crone one that you can turn the wheels on and you can turn the outside round of hay away from the edge of the map. And I love that one. I think that is such an awesome mod. And it is like a feature that I particularly like in real life as well on any kind of hay turner. Um, being able to just angle it slightly and then move it away and you know very often if I was turning hay I used to um, it's been a few years since I've done any hay turning mind um, but I used to when I did the outside round if I wasn't able to do it with a hay bob and cause I've only ever done it with small machinery like a hay bob and stuff like that um, if I wasn't able to use a hay bob and put uh, one of the gates up to like and then do it slow ish to keep it away from the edge um, if I had one of those um, the, the sip centipede spider type things um and if i only had those now this one here i am actually just running the mower around like this there and then i'm going to turn the mower around in just a second and get the other way um but yeah if i wasn't able to if i was on one of the centipede things i would just go really slowly around the outside round so that it didn't like fling it a really long way and that was usually enough that was usually all right it would um sort of work out okay doing it like that and then we come up through here and be very careful that you don't swing out too far and smash the mower on the um the post there it's the last thing you want you really really don't want to be walloping your mower not on anything it's really not a good idea it doesn't help at all so we'll bring this one up here like this and i'm not going to make that turn i don't think I'm going to have to go round like that. But if I drop the mower down here, we should be able to get the rest of the grass. Yep, there we go. We're not going to need to do any more around that one. I've always found mowing with a... Um, um, I've only ever used mowers like this. I've never used a mower directly in front of me on a tractor. Um, I've always found it to be a bit awkward going around uh, posts in the middle of the field because it doesn't matter which way you go. You've got to lift up and um cut back in a couple of times in order to do a reasonable job of getting all the grass around said post it's always a little bit of a nuisance and we'll bring that one down there like that it's very steep ground here in places it always makes for interesting driving when you're driving on steep ground i've always quite liked working steep ground i know this may sound a little bit odd to some of you but i've always enjoyed the challenge of working on steep ground because you've still got to try and get your machine to perform to it the best of its ability you still got to do a neat and tidy job of it i mean look at this look at that steep ground that we're coming up there that is quite the challenge for the tractor isn't it that is quite the challenge and that is also going to be our screenshot for the day i think i think that looks pretty good right there pulling away on a steep hill is never easy that is always a particular challenge for driver and machine but uh, usually it can be done if you you just you just got to be a little bit sensible and careful about it going down the hill is always worse than going up the hill I mean, well i say that going up the hill is fine until you get to a point where you can go no further and when your machine is unable to go any further and starts to spin a little bit that's when it really really gets interesting and that's the bit that kind of makes your heart start climbing up into your mouth because um you 
you've either got to sort of break slowly and let yourself all the way back down to the bottom of the hill or you've got to try and pull away again on the hill and that is a really tricky thing it doesn't matter what situation you're in if you're on a really steep hill and your tractor is just ground to a halt and you can't go any further trying to get started in any direction is tough right and you because remember you want to do this without actually destroying any machinery or anything around you and you, you want to you know be alive at the end of it as well all of these are, are things that um, need to be taken into consideration and things that you'd like to do going down a steep hill when you're doing hay that i really am not a fan of especially i mean this here would be fine right there's no issues here with going down that steep hill because you've got a runoff at the bottom and it goes up the other side you're not going to have any problems with that whatsoever if you've got a steep hill that goes down and stops halfway down a steep hill and uh, you know you've got a hedgerow across and you've got a turn that makes it a little bit more interesting going around you going down over you slow the revs of the tractor right down and you make sure you're in a low gear so that you can start in inching down the hill slowly uh, because if you're going too fast your tractor is not going to um, be able to stop and if you touch the brakes at all going down a steep hill when you've got hay on the ground your tractor's going to start sliding right it, it's like driving on ice it's absolutely terrible so you, you basically you got this slicked up surface that you need to take your tractor across and you've got to do so in such a way that doesn't result in your immediate death um, and if you touch the brakes while you're going down a steep hill on hay your tractor will slide it'll just go whoosh zoom right down to the bottom of the hill and there's nothing you can do about it so you can't use the brakes the brakes are out of the question completely and it can be quite dangerous i mean it's not always going to happen it's not guaranteed but there is a very high chance of mishap when you are turning on a if you're turning hay on a steep hill and you've got to kind of turn so you know the outside round i do extremely slowly so I, I would just come down and i would use this on i would like put it into a really low gear as i came down through here like this and i would do it like this and let the tractor and the gear hold it so i'm still moving but not doing anything if you start to slide the only thing you can do is stamp your foot on the accelerator and hope that by biting in your wheels will gain some purchase and then you can start to slow it down again brakes are out of the question you've got to use your accelerator to slow you down right literally this it, it, i know that sound it may sound a little bit strange and those of you who are familiar with driving on very steep ground with tractors all of this is familiar stuff you, you'll know exactly what i'm talking about and you sort of well yeah of course you know that that's obvious but there are plenty of people who've spent their entire lives thinking that a molehill is really quite a, a a, you know an obstacle to get round um mole hills are something that some of us have only ever been able to dream of quite frankly and i grew up in an area where the, the hills aren't that big okay um i i know some places where the hills are much more drastic than that i've seen videos of people working hills in the likes of switzerland and puts us to shame it really does and they employ all the same techniques that i've been describing i've seen them working on these steep hills and you see them like trying to control their vehicles and there's no braking on the hills they go on the steepest hills it is it's insane and you look at this and you think what are you doing i grew up like driving on hills i know about driving on hills and i'm watching these people and i'm watching what they're doing and my heart is in my mouth and i am like what what seriously what is going through your mind right now why would you even think that you could drive a tractor on that hill and away they go they're just bouncing along quite merrily i mean yes they do have some modern tractors with like triple wheels on them and things like that well double wheels at least so it's a lot of act um you know extra added stability that makes things a lot safer than it ever used to be um you know a lot of what i used to do was on the little old massey fergusons and stuff like that i'm yeah see here it's, it's quite steep under here i'm going underneath this bit i'm not going to bother about doing the the strip in between all of these i'm just going to go like that and we'll avoid that bit so um we kind of do this field in two separate sections it'll just make it a little bit easier for us as we carry on round. i might go back through and tidy some of it up in a minute um but i'm not actually that concerned about it we can leave some of these bits and then we don't need to really worry about it and then here we want to back this one see like there if you lifted that mower up on a hill it's it's difficult because it's pulling you downhill you you kind of i mean 
I might have looked at that if I was doing that in real life I might have looked at that and I'd actually have um, not gone along with the mower hanging downhill I might have just made it so that I wasn't uh, cutting in that direction and cut in the other opposite direction um, just you know th there's always a way sometimes it takes a little bit longer on a hill than it does anywhere else just because you're trying to figure out ways to do it that don't result in nasty things happening to you um, and yeah you, you just take you end up taking your time over it a little bit that's all it's um it's, it's and it's not the end of the world um a farmer would far rather well at least the farmers that i've always worked for would far rather you came back with the tractor intact and you intact as well because you know having an employee that's got all of his limbs is always a bonus it, it does help when um you, you're moving on to the next task rather than having to rush off to hospital and have said limb sewn back on um because you, you you've mangled the tractor up at the bottom of the hill so it's, it's all, all all things to be considered and the farmers are generally quite happy if you come back in one piece um that being said some of them are more concerned about the tractor than they are about you but we're not going into that today so we have almost finished this we just got the the bit down the bottom to do now and this this is the the easier bit to get done i think um just wondering how I should do this. I think we might start trying to do this in a loop, maybe. Um, now that we got some particularly steep ground here on this bit, we can come up through here and I'll take a loop up there. Just want to come up across there and then I'm going to lift up and I'm going to come out the top around this tree like this. I'm actually going to drop it back down there and gather that bit and then I can go straight down through and I can gather that bit as well look at that look at that smoothly done we've got a bit around that pole there I might try and pick up some of that in a minute uh, we'll come out of there and just drop it in on this side Is this little bit sticking up here we need to do something about this we might just start um, coming in on there and doing that bit just come up through there that'll be quite easy to do I should think and then up there and we've got a really steep part here that's a, again another little bit of a challenge i am i'm sure it was this field that he did I mean, you know maybe it's not but it does look very very familiar it, it could have been actually in fs15 rather than fs17 that he did this field did old snickadoo um so i i might just I, you know i may be remembering the wrong thing he's done a lot of different videos and a lot of different things and um i could just be remembering the wrong thing but i am i'm I'm certain that he mowed this field, turned it all into hay, the whole thing, and it was a really good video as well. I don't remember it taking this long, but then he, he does tend to like speed things up and chop bits out so that it, it keeps it interesting and keeps his videos down to like um, 10 to 15 minutes so that they're like they're just a, a little short um, injection of some farming simulator and it's, he does do let's plays as well. Um, but the style that he's particularly known for is the ones where he's not talking at all. And it's kind it's kind of time-lapse, but not. So some of it has got little bits of time-lapse in. I can't even get the mower to go into that bit. I'm now going to go along here, and we're just going to do the top run along this bit. Let's take that out. I don't know if it's going a little bit too high up that slope. We're not going to go any higher than that. And then I can come back around here and get another piece along the bottom. See, I got one bit there that we can't quite get to because the, the grass is in the wrong position. So we'll ignore that. I'll lift the mower up and swing right round. Try to miss the trees. I did. I missed the trees. Miracles never cease. Right. And just a tiny little triangle left. I We will... Actually, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to uh, ignore the bit that's around that... Um, telegraph pole that's just there which we'll just leave that bit because it's only going to make life difficult if we uh, when we come back to do the last bit so if i pick that one up come in through here there we go and then we've got one outside round to do and hopefully we can do that without damaging any machinery either and then we're done we have mowed this field so then in our next episode we are going to um turn it and that shouldn't take too long we will try the turner that he's got here but I'm thinking I'd prefer to go and get the crone one, my favourite one. Um, however, my favourite one, I think it's a bit bigger than the one that he's... We'll have a look at them. That's what we'll have. Rather than saying we're definitely going to go for one or the other, we'll just go and take a look and we'll see what is available here. So I'm just going to leave the mower down and go straight up over here. 
Now that is a bit that is making the tractor grunt. Look at that. There we go. We come on round and hopefully we get this. We don't. I'm hoping that there's no stones on this outside round. As long as there's no stones here, we'll be all right. Um, now I'm going to do this week of gameplay and then next week I will do a question about the next map that we move to. It won't be this week but I will do one for next week. I'm going to be selecting a couple maps. So feel free to keep suggesting maps. I do have a look at these different maps that people are suggesting. Almost definitely the maps that I choose from will be in um, on the Mod Hub and not taken from elsewhere. Um, just because I prefer using Mod Hub, it allows more people access to it um, because uh, I know that there are a lot of people that do struggle to get some of the other maps. I also like to try to keep as many of the console maps in the choice as possible because I know that there are several of you on console only that do like to be able to at least follow along with the series if you're not able to do all of it. Um, so if I've got a map that is available to console users as well, that is really good. Now I've said up to this point that I wasn't planning on using a UK map at all. Um, likes of uh, the, what was it, the Oak? Oak Farm, is it? Okay, I can't really remember now, but um, so, you know, we, we, there are some new maps that have come out recently that are looking pretty good. Um, I may change my mind on that. I may not. I'm not quite sure at the moment. I haven't me I haven't made a complete decision. I'm not, I'm not going to commit to that one way or the other just yet. Um, I'm aware that there are some very good maps there, but uh, I'm also aware that they've had a lot of coverage by... Um, most other YouTubers that play Farming Simulator. So I'm, I'm sort of not wanting to just repeat what everybody else is doing. This is why I generally try to stay away from the maps that everybody else does. Um, that being said, I did just do 87 episodes on Estancia Lapacho, which has uh, you know, been quite a popular map with a lot of YouTubers. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't always work out, does it? But anyway, that is all we got time for today. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.